Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania has always been prone to flooding. On average, there will be a flood of some note at least once a year, and by that I mean just enough for the residents to take notice and then continue to go about their day as though nothing were wrong. Floods such as these can cause damage, however they are nothing in comparison to the worst flood the city has ever seen, the now infamous Great St. Patrick's Day Flood of 1936. In order to understand the context of the flood, you have to understand the time period leading up to it. Pittsburgh, towards the end of the Gilded Age, was a place of industry, steel mills, and the constantly tense relations between workers and their employers. Notable figures such as Andrew Carnegie, the founder of U.S. Steel, and H.J. Hines, the founder of the eponymously named H.J. Hines Company, called the city home. These men were economic titans in their day, and they, along with others, would come to be known as the captains of industry. Their reign would only last until about 1900, and as the Gilded Age ended, the Progressive Era began. Figures like Carnegie would shed their titles as captains of industry in favor of the far more appealing philanthropist. Hines was no different, and as such he became the president of a group seeking to get government-funded flood control for the city of Pittsburgh. This group, dubbed the Flood Commission of Pittsburgh, was founded sometime before 1908, and in 1912 it sent a formal letter to the city's Chamber of Commerce. Their proposals would be ignored by the city, the Army Corps of Engineers, and Congress for almost three decades. With the late 1920s came a renewed interest in flood control for the Army Corps of Engineers, after a series of issues with breaking levees and the ever-present need to find work during the Depression. The political landscape of the city was changing as well, and with the shifts in governance, it seemed something would finally be done concerning the city's flooding issues. In 1935, the House of Representatives even passed a bill which would build nine reservoirs on the Monongahela and Allegheny Rivers. However, the Senate would not address these issues in time. On the night of St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 1936, denizens of Pittsburgh experienced the worst flood in their city's history. Snowmelt, along with heavy rain, caused flooding at heights as high as 46 feet, though this figure can be a bit hard to understand. In order to make sense of it, we need to discuss something called flood stage. Flood stage is the depth at which the level for a given body of water puts people and property at risk. You could basically call it the danger zone. Because of local geography, the level at which flood stage sits differs for each body of water. For the Monongahela and the Allegheny, the two rivers which meet in Pittsburgh to form the Ohio, flood stage starts at 25 feet. The St. Patrick's Day flood would reach 46 feet in depth at its peak. What this means is that the 1936 flood was 21 feet higher than flood stage. Compared to 46 feet, this number may seem comparatively smaller. However, the flooding itself was still severe enough to destroy houses and cause residents to flee upstairs or even onto their roofs until they could be rescued. It would take days for the water to recede back to normal levels, and in that time, thousands of buildings were destroyed. Damages were estimated to be $250 million, and accounting for inflation, this figure would be well over $5 billion as of March 2022. In addition to the damages from flooding, it also caused a power outage, which led to an inability to fight fires that broke out during the flooding and its aftermath. In total, 69 people lost their lives, and to this day you can still find flood markers throughout downtown Pittsburgh, marking the height. In the wake of the disaster, Congress and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers would survey and eventually construct the Kinzua Dam in 1960, of which the construction would be disastrous in its own right, as it was done so on land belonging to the Seneca, many of whom were displaced in the process. Though perhaps not as well known as other floods such as Johnstown, the St. Patrick's Day flood was still influential, especially to those who were directly affected by it. It is an example of how improper governance can lead to preventable damages later on and how far-reaching across time and space some disasters can be, even to those who seemingly had nothing to do with it. In the end, 69 people died, the Seneca lost territory again, and the city of Pittsburgh still floods to this day. But I suppose it could have been worse.